Today we're going to talk about following the rules on whatever platform you're on and what can happen to you if you don't. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about the rules on whatever platform. We'll take eBay for an example. I just got a notice from somebody who's suspended for not following the rules. And their answer to that was that they saw a whole bunch of other people that were doing the exact same thing, so they figured it must be okay. Instead of actually looking into what the issue was and whether it's okay with eBay or not. Now, we follow the rules no matter what. If this is your only source of income, you are doing this for a living, this is paying for your kids, your roof over your head, your food, your car, everything else, there's no reason on earth to jeopardize your business for a few extra bucks on a couple of extra sales. I would never, ever, ever recommend that at all. It would just be pointless. You would be defeating the purpose of you having a business. I won't do anything if there's even the slightest chance that it could affect my business, my revenue, and what pays my bills. I don't really care if somebody else does it or not. I only care that it's a rule and I follow the rule. I don't go along with them. I don't do it just because somebody else does it. Now, I had a video, and I'll have a link right up here, covering eBay's user agreement, showing you what's in there. One of the clauses in there basically says that they can treat issues like that, like if you violate a rule, based on your service, based on your time on eBay, how good you've been, whether you followed the rules in the past, and such forth. If you're a new person and you break a rule, they could boot you off completely, terminate anything with eBay right off the bat for doing something stupid. Ignorance to a rule or a law is never an excuse to be able to do it or to get away with it. It just doesn't work that way. Now, a good example of this would be listing something on eBay's banned item list and figuring since other people were doing it, you could get away with doing the same thing too. Still, other people will kind of alter the title so they're not really saying what the item is, but they're still selling it and it's still shown in a image for that listing. It doesn't matter if you list it in a specific category or if you try to disguise the item. Another eBay user could turn you in. It doesn't doesn't matter at all how you word it. If it's not supposed to be on the site, you don't list it. If you've been told to pull something down, you pull it down. It's just a no-brainer with all of this stuff because it can cost you your revenue. What's coming into your business? Now, even in my case, when I put up a video, I have comments listed underneath about recommendations and how to avoid getting in trouble or how to do this. And many times those recommendations are telling people to violate the rules. So you got to be careful. If you're not sure on something, go to eBay and ask them directly. Don't just take someone else's word on it, whether it's mine or not. If you're not sure and you have any doubts whatsoever, you go to the source and you ask eBay. Now, this isn't just for eBay, with any site. I just got a notice for a Mickey Mouse Club record with a net singing in it and was told that I don't have the rights to use Mickey Mouse in my title on Amazon. So in that case, I do have the right to sell the record. I just removed Mickey Mouse from the title and then just left it at that. Another notice I received just the other day from Amazon is for a purchase invoice request for some toys that I've had up now for two years and been selling for two years. It's something that happens. New Vero's, new bands and certain items can be added at any point on any of these sites. So if you get a notice, you got to take it down. Don't try and skirt the system on anything. Again, if this is paying your bills, this is how you live. This is how you feed your kids. This is how you put gas in your car and get to work or whatever you happen to be doing is through eBay, Amazon, or one of the sites you follow the rules. I would never recommend anybody violating the rules. Now, one of the big ones I see people doing is not following the rules when it means you could get in trouble for something you did. You made a mistake and you try to cover it up through other actions. Now, that is all considered deceit by eBay standards. It's actually in the user agreement that you can't use any deceptive means to bypass feedback, ratings, rankings, or anything like that. It's in the user agreement. You agreed to it. So you can't do that. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. Just like I said with the banned items list, I see people selling stuff on those that will show up in the ended completed listings. So I don't care what that says on those items. If it's on the list of banned items, like a military manual for a weapon or something, like that I won't sell it 
a police officer's badge that even is obsolete if I don't have a letter stating that that's obsolete, though I probably wouldn't get taken down for that, I could still get in some trouble with eBay if somebody reports it. It doesn't matter if you think you can get away with it. It matters if you could get reported for that issue. Regardless, if it's a rule, I don't break it. It just isn't worth the extra money. There's many platforms you can sell and there's many ways to make money online. There's no sense on earth in jeopardizing any of that for something stupid like making 10, 20 extra bucks. If I can't sell it on eBay, I sell the item locally. If I mess up on something on there, I just fess up. I messed up. I'll take that as a learned lesson, and I won't make that mistake again. That's how a professional business is supposed to run. You're supposed to just go with the flow. You do something. You correct it. You fix it. You move on, and you don't make those mistakes again. Stuff is going to happen. You're going to get a mistake. I've got a Vero in the past before for an item that I had no clue on. From that point on, I always looked at the Vero list, which is ever growing. Same thing with Amazon. If I got a notice for something, I keep that on a list of items I should know enough in the future to never list on the platform as well. Etsy. Etsy has a banned items list. Walmart has a list of items that I can't list on their site. Discogs, HIP, all of them have stuff like that. Follow the rules if you want to be safe. Now, another reason to follow the rules. Let's say you broke a rule. eBay didn't catch it, but later on down the road, they figure out that you did something wrong and they find the other one. So instead of just one issue you have in front of you, you could have two, which would be enough to send you off the platform for good instead of maybe a three-day suspension or a slap on the wrist. If you're honest with them, that will show and it should help you out in the long run. So I don't risk even my reputation with eBay. Don't lie to them. Don't try and be deceitful. Again, all of those things are against the user agreement and can sink your business in the long run. Play it safe. That is always the best way to run a business, follow the rules, follow the law, and play it safe.
But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. favorite fancy food is fancy pink grapefruit. Announcing new fancy fruits from Lifesavers. This thing tastes exactly like a fancy fruit apple Lifesaver. I wonder what it's called. Fancy fruit, the candy that doesn't taste like candy. Fancy fruits taste more like real fruit than anything you ever popped in your mouth. Fancy fruits, you get more slices in a longer roll. Picked and packed by Lifesavers.